kingdom nestled in my heart where everything is well. I turn my thoughts within, dear God, and find pure love and peace. Harmony, the watchword here, apparent doubt and discord cease. For here is where I find the truth. There is one, the all in all. The truth that makes me free to be. I heed its every call. very, very warm and open-armed, open-hearted evening to each and every one of you joining us on Lifeline. This is the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living. My name is Sandra Cooper and I'll be your moderator for this evening's wonderful hour of connectivity, liberty, love and laughter. We have a very, very special guest with us this evening and I'll tell you about him in a little bit, little while. And we just want to welcome you to this experience with us. You know, we this this activity came up during um, the, the you know in March last year when we um, shut down at the temple. We weren't going out to church, and things seemed to be so challenging at the time. And we created this experience to provide spiritual tools and strategies to enable each and every one of us to rise above and consciously respond to the challenges being faced during these times. We also felt that, that you know, this type of, of conversation would help to support each other in shifting our thinking or consciousness from a fear-based way of being to being faith-based. And so we are really, really happy to have you all here with us this, this evening. And so I'm going to invite our pastor, Reverend John Scott, to do our opening treatment and to also to, to welcome each and every one of you. Reverend John. Thank you, Sandy, and good evening, Worldwide Spiritual Family. It's a joy to add my own words of welcome to this evening's conversation and to just say, wherever you are, all of God in all its beauty and with all its love and all its power and all its grace is right where you are. And that love holds you close to the everlasting heart of the living spirit almighty so that we are one. Please join me in this opening affirmative prayer. Lifeline, for God is life, the very life of life. And that life is our life now. And that life goes out from our hearts this evening to touch, to heal, to bless, to prosper, to love and liberate everyone with whom we come into contact, everyone who is tuned into this spiritual experience, everyone who shares our technical team, our wonderful guest speaker, Reverend Jesse Jennings, our moderator, and everyone who partakes of this beautiful, beautiful experience. And so we pass the chalice of our love to each other and drink deeply from that knowledge and that wisdom which comes with this evening's activity. Blessing each other and blessing every thought shared and every idea expressed because it is all and only God. And we are so grateful to be together. 
This word is now released to law in thanksgiving that it is already a divine done deal in the mind of God. And we simply give thanks that this is so. And so, it, so is. it is. Thank you so much, Reverend John. Friends, we really have a treat for you this evening. And so we're going to invite you to come close and to, to really this, uh, sit at the feet of our master. Our, our guest this evening is a long time Centers for Spiritual Living Minister and contributing editor of Guide for Spiritual Living, Science of Mind magazine, where his questions and answers column has run monthly since 1991. Wow. He provides feature articles as well and annually curates the October Daily Guides by Science of Mind founder, Dr. Ernest Holmes. He, create, he created the book, The Essential Ernest Holmes, and wrote the foreword to the complete edition of the Science of Mind textbook, as well as the preface to Holmes' republished work, The Hidden Power of the Bible. An anthology of his magazine columns under the title, More Than We Seem, will be published by Spiritual Living Press in the spring of this year. Friends, Get your pens and, and pencils and paper handy because I'm sure you're going to take lots of notes and I'm sure you're going to have tons of questions which we invite you to write in the chat so that uh, Reverend Jesse can address each and every one of them. Okay, so do open your arms and your heart and welcome our very special guest this evening, Reverend Dr. Jesse Jennings. Reverend Jesse. That that is the most beautiful introduction I have ever received. Thank you so much. Uh, it is a joy to be with you, Temple of Light family. I got to meet several of you last week as we were setting this up, uh, Sandy and, and Reverend John and Theo and our two practitioners tonight. And you have been kind enough to invite me to speak a little bit about awakening, spiritual awakening. Spiritual awakening is similar to physical awakening, but it's not identical. Physical awakening, you wake up in the morning, you've had a good sleep. Sleep is a good thing. We don't get enough sleep as a rule. I like to take naps, you know, but you wake up and now you know you're awake and you have a day ahead of you and you go out and do things. And when the time has come and you're tired, you lay down and you sleep again. And we go through that cycle our whole lives. Spiritual awakening is similar. It's different in this way because the sleep that we're waking up from in spiritual awakening, frankly, is more like a coma or at least a trance, the trance of separation. You're familiar with Dr. Ernest Holmes. Sandy mentioned him. And he, when asked, what are the two things that we heal? Actually, he was asked, what was the one thing we healed? And he gave two answers, now that I think about it. What, what is the one thing that we heal in the science of mind? He gave two answers, depending on who was asking in the situation. So the one thing is that we heal the sense that there's anything that needs healing, mm, which is kind of circular logic. The other thing he said that, frankly, is more useful is that we heal the sense of separation mm -hmm. from our source, mm -hmm. from God. Feeling separate from our source is the trance mm -hmm. that we've been in. And spiritual awakening breaks through that with the truth of our being. I have two working definitions for spiritual awakening. One is it's the recognition that the whole world is in you. The other more elegant definition is that it's the recognition that you are the mechanism through which the divine mind has an experience of itself in this world at this time. It is having that through you. It is having that through each of us. And it could have it in this way, no other way. It cannot have an experience through another being mm. that is of the same quality that it can have through me. 
because I'm experiencing life. And this goes back to the first definition of the whole world is in you. So I'm thinking about mountains. I'm thinking about you imagine a mountain. Okay. You're not seeing one right now. You're imagining it. You have it in your mind's eye. And you know that that mountain is within you because you know that when you open your eyes, it won't be there, that it's just an interior process that you're having. But when you look at an actual mountain, you're standing before the mountain, that mountain is still within you. Science tells us, for example, that your eyes don't see and your ears don't hear. The brain does that. What the eyes do is they gather data. And they stream the data using electricity and chemistry. They stream it along lines into the lifelines, really, into the brain. And the ears gather impulses and the little drums vibrate in your ears and the information goes to the brain. And the brain sorts it all out and says, this is what you're looking at or this is what you're listening to. And then there's mind. Mm -hmm. See, that's brain. But around brain is mind. And mind is the thing that says, not only is that what you're listening to, but here's what you can do with it. Here's something creative. That you can. So I'm standing in front of the mountain. I perceive the mountain. My brain is happy with that. My eyes are happy with that. My mind says, go write a poem about the mountain. Go paint a picture of the mountain. Go write a song about the mountain. We take inspiration. And that's how the whole world is within us. The experience of the thing. The experience of the thing to us is the thing. Mm. the experience of the thing to us is the thing we like to pretend sometimes that it's separate so you can measure the mountain weigh the mountain quantify all these things in life and because we do live in two worlds at once as spiritual beings having a human experience we can do that and we call it science but science ultimately like everything else is subjective to the mind of the beholding consciousness so when I change my experience inside, I change what I contact outside. I change my life. I change my life by changing my experience. And I was looking for an example of this, and I came up with Jesus walking on water. Now, if you believe the gospel account that Jesus walked on water, there's several possible explanations you have for that one is that he was the son of god and only he could do that sort of thing there's another explanation doesn't rule out the first explanation if you're a believer in his divinity i just ask you be a believer in your own mm. but he had here's what he had to do i believe to walk on water he had to change his experience of water mm -hmm. He had to say, this can support me. This is now for this time being a solid thing so that I can make a point to the observers. He changed his experience. Can I do that? Theoretically, haven't needed to. Been fine with swimming in water and walking on land, you know. But there's a lot of stuff I do need to do. There's a lot of stuff all of us need to do in terms of changing our experience of the world. And that's rearranged the interior expectations of it. That's spiritual awakening. The recognition that I can do that. Not only can I do that, I was built to do that. I was created to do that. I came into this world specifically to do that, to take up my divine inheritance. Mm. If the truth of my being is the truth of my being, then mm. I need to know it. If the truth of everybody's being is, in fact, really the truth of their being and not just another story, then everybody needs to know it. And if it's the truth of their being, we can even say that everybody is bound to know it. Which is why in the Declaration of Principles, Dr. Holmes wrote, he says, we believe in the complete emancipation from all discord of every nature and that this goal is sure to be attained by who? All. All attained by all, nobody left out. How can you tell if somebody is spiritually awakened? You don't have to. You just focus on your own awakening. The recognition that you have within yourself that you are in fact one with all that is and that it resides within you in your consciousness for you to manage, for you to shape, for you to kind of sculpt. And so you have a person in your life, you have a relationship with them. Maybe it's a difficult relationship, a difficult conversation. What do you do? Do you change them? Do you fix them? No, you rearrange 
how you hold that. There are people in the world that we don't agree with. There are things going on in the world that horrify us. How do we hold that? We, sur <clears throat> we surround those conditions in unconditional love. We surround those conditions in the knowing. But while I can't change or fix another person, what I can do is know that they know that they have a choice. They can know who they are because this goal is sure to be attained by all. We wish a lot of times that it was attained in front of us. You know, we wish sometimes too that people would give us credit and say, oh, well, you know, I didn't know who I was, but then you came along and here you are. Isn't that great? Well, that's not how it works. And that's ego satisfaction on another level. How it works is that people come to it when they come to it. So the question always is, am I willing? Am I willing right now to have this experience? Now at my center tonight, we're starting a new science mind class. It's going on actually right now. And uh, we have, as you do, all these classes, and all these workshops and all these events, and they're wonderful. And the only downside to them is when somebody thinks, well, after the next workshop, maybe I'll be spiritually awakened. <laughs> maybe next week or this time next year or something, I'll, right? Willing and ready are not the same thing. We're all ready. We may or may not be willing. We are ready to have a spiritual awakening. We are ready to know who we are. And I even go so far as to say, if you're watching this, this is a favorite kind of um, aside, I guess, of mine. If you're watching this, there's a reason. There's a reason that you're not doing something else. And tonight you're hearing this. And, and if you're picking up a book of, of literature, like New Thought, you know, that that reminds you of who you are, that seems vaguely familiar, but at the same time, it's new information. It's no mistake. Mm. And when you wake up spiritually, it's a binary thing. You're there and you're never not there again. You may go to sleep, but you won't go back into the trance. Mm. You won't go back into the coma. Uh, Reverend John and Sandy and I were talking beforehand about the your temple of light has been, um, has been open for 40 years. Uh, my center in, in suburban Houston is going on 36. That's you know, 70, 76 years there of, uh, of people uh, mm -hmm. coming and going. And, and many in your house, just as many in my house, have been there a long time. But there are people who come and they listen to maybe a friend sent them or a relative, you know, and they come and they sit through a talk and, and you don't see them again. Mm -hmm. And uh, Nowadays, you know, it's easier to you email them and you, you try to find out and maybe you don't hear from them and they're, they're gone. And you think, especially when you're new at this as a minister, you think to yourself, God, I failed them. You know, I said something terrible or I, I didn't say something I should have. And now they're gone. <laughs> and, uh, but I think what's really happened, maybe it's not our story. Maybe it's not our style but we've ruined them in a very important way. We've ruined them for perpetual negativity. Never again, never again can anyone hearing this message, this type of message that we offer in this teaching, never again can they say to themselves, nobody's ever told me I'm more than I seem. Nobody's ever told me that there's power greater than I am. It's right where I am that I can use. I know that. And they may push it away and push it away, just like I pushed it away. Maybe you did it too for a while. Indeed but it's there. To. It did you have, yeah. And but there it is. And and you can't shake it off. It kind of sits on your shoulder. This this awareness that maybe I could be more. Maybe I could do more. Maybe I could be in charge of my own destiny. Absolutely, sir. You know, we have had people who have come and left for 15, 20 years while while it kind of gestated and percolated the message they got. And then they come back when they are ready. That's right. Yes. So, yeah. So that that for me is the awakening, you know, and um, I think Dr. Holmes quotes Saint Paul in Romans thirteen eleven, and he, when it, it says, "Now it is high time to awake out of sleep," and I think all of humanity, I think this whole, as a friend of mine calls the pandemic, the pandemonium, this whole pandemic, <laughs> for the last fifteen or eighteen months, has been a wake up call. Yes. For so many it, of us. It has on so many levels. It mm -hmm. has. 
you know? I love what you said, sir, about um, Jesus changing his experience of water because I had a personal experience. I did the fire walk a few years mm. ago. Mm -hmm. And having just prepared my mind for a few hours, I was able to, ex to change my experience of white hot coals, the temperature of at which you smelt steel and walk barefooted across a 10 foot wide pit. And I thought, well, if I can do that after just a couple of hours of preparation, then who am I to question Jesus's changing of his experience yeah. of, of, of outer reality? And so all of that he did began to make more sense to me. Mm -hmm. And it becomes practical too, John, because it's, you know, how often are you going to need to walk across hot coals? You walk around hot coals, you, you know, go yes. across the street from hot coals, but there's stuff in our lives. If I did that, how can I take this to my work? If I did that, how can I take this into my marriage? If I did, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It's, no, it's yes, you're walking up, your marriage isn't walking across hot coals. <laughs> Not at all. Not at all, <laughs> sir. But we can change our experience, and when we do, the world conforms. You know, yeah. the world. Remember Emma Hopkins? I know you love Emma Hopkins too. Love Emma her. Hopkins says, the world will persist in exhibiting before you what you persist in affirming the world is. Absolutely. So yeah. the affirming in here is done. Yeah. Yes. Oh, wow. Well, you know, one of the challenges that uh, many of us in this teaching might have is it makes so much sense intellectually, you know, Ernest Holmes' writings, um, in, um, logical, rational, absolutely powerful. But when it comes to the actual, so might be, there might be some awakening intellectually, but how do we um, move that understanding of principle to, act, to action, mm -hmm. to put it into our own life, to applying it to the marriage, applying it to the, to the health diagnosis, applying it to the finances. How do we make that shift? Two ways, in my opinion. First is to realize it starts in the heart. Everything starts in the heart. We've been, we've been indoctrinated to think it starts in the head, it starts as information, but we came into this life, hearts wide open. And then we began to receive education. We began to receive information. Mm -hmm. that may have caused us to close down somewhat in fear. It begins in the heart. The heart knows how to do it. The head needs to get out of the way. That's, that's one answer. The other answer is through regular practice of revisiting the place of awakening in ourselves, spiritual mind treatment, meditation, contemplation, other forms of prayer, um, improving reading, that kind of thing. All of this taken together gives us we advance a little further each time in our application of things. Yeah. And life doesn't, how do I put this? Uh, let, me, let me put it this way. When we work through our problems in a spiritual way, we don't get to a place where there are no problems. We, in fact, get to a place where there are larger problems. But they're not the same problems over and over. They're not neurotic problems. There are things like, how can I make a difference in the world? We start caring more about other people and how we can help them individually and collectively as a society. You know, we take that's one of the great paradoxes, Sandy, of this teaching. People who look at it at first glance, they think it's real self absorbed. It's all me, me, me. It's, you know, I am this and I am that. When in fact, what you're doing is clearing the way to be an agent of healing in society mm. because the only thing that stands in the way of that is our own is our own neurotic baggage you know of low self-esteem and separation I, you know, yeah. separation exactly yes well Holmes said you know that evolution is the awakening of the soul to a recognition of its unity with the whole yes we are one and i think that's what's happening yes uh, right now an awakening to the fact that we are one there are no degrees of separation that's exactly right. Yeah. And, and the fact is that we, you know, we are advised to put the mask on our, ourselves first when we are in the aircraft. Yeah. <laughs> um, as parents, as caregivers, if you have a small child or someone who's in your care, we are 
um, told to put our mask on first. So when we, we have to do the work, we have to uh, do the treatments and so mm -hmm. on. And in that, and that's, that's the only way we can be the, um, the light that is able to shine on others and make a difference in their lives. That's exactly right. But the person observing that might say, look at that selfish person putting their mask on first. It, you have to get to the place where you realize your connection mm -hmm. with, with one another. And that's, the heart has never, I don't know, it's never really forgotten that. We have to, we just have to listen to that. And then we know, and we know, we know what to do and we know when to speak and we know when to stay silent and let the others speak and so on. You know, it just becomes, it just becomes a whole lot easier. Mm. Ah, oh, I'd like to welcome Bevar Moody. Bevar is one of our board members. And um, he says, I'm already enjoying the experience. Um, and, and Bevar, tell me what experience is that? Is it the experience of our, our um, lifeline this evening or is it the experience of walking this path of truth? Tell us, let's write it in the chat and, and we will respond. Yeah. Yes, so, so um, <clears throat> you know, being in truth for, any, for a period of time does not guarantee that one becomes enlightened or one awakens <laughs> to their spiritual magnificence. It does take effort and work. It does take, um, you know, as our Reverend Elmo, our founding minister would say, we have to, you have to do the work, dear. You know? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, oh, we welcome Carol Campbell, one of our practitioners. And she says, I think it's, it's Emerson that she's quoting that we need to get our bloated nothingness out of the way. That's right. That's yes. right. Yes. Of the divine circuit. Yes. Out when of the I first, way of the when I first heard that statement, I went on that immediately, and then I realized it was <laughs> talking about the physical form. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes. yes. This, new, this new thought teaching mm. does a little bit of bait and switch. Going to your point, Sandy, about you have to have a reason. You have to have motivation to want to do the work. And if somebody comes to, I guess, the average person and says, you know, if you will have, if you'll do the work to have a spiritual awakening, you'll recognize the universe as one whole system. That's less maybe enticing than to say, if you'll do this, you'll have prosperity. Yep. If you do this, you'll have a healthy body. If you do this, you'll get along with people. You know, and that's the bait and switch because you realize a lot of our literature, you know, even in the titles and stuff, it brings people into that. You can think and grow rich. You can have, and it's like, oh, let, and what, what it is, you, you're falling into a life transforming awakening experience under the pretext of material gain. Yes, absolutely. And if it works, it works. It's, I mean, it's a healthy thing. It's, uh, but it's, Relatively few of us seek out the books and the, and the material that, that promise us an elevated consciousness. Because we ask, what's in it for me? Yeah, yeah. But, but the, the master teacher, uh, Jesus Christ said, seek ye first the kingdom. Exactly. You know, and so when we, when we seek to develop our consciousness, then all things will be added on to us. That's, that's my understanding of that. Scripture. Absolutely absolutely right and who understood it who hearing that understood it at the time maybe thought the kingdom of the kingdom of god and its righteousness was a destination you know mm -hmm. after life or what have you but that's exact because the kingdom of god is a, is a context it's a context in which life can occur and then all these things are added as well as things you didn't know you needed or I, wanted, like to think of it, you know? I like to think of it as the kingdom k-i-n-d-o-m beautiful Beautiful. I'm going to write that down. I'm going to use that. You're going to hear that from me sooner than later. And, and as, as you write that, this is what we do. Um, we have also another of our practitioners online, Carol Charlton, and, and she says, practice, practice, practice ceaselessly. We are never on holiday. I love that. Never on holiday. That's yeah. true. That's absolutely true. What is the treatment that I'm giving? out on the highway, what is the treatment that I'm giving at the mm -hmm. supermarket? What is, you know, well, where especially when- Your life is really a living prayer. We talked about that a few yeah. years ago. Yeah, 
And, and so whatever you're thinking and doing and whatever you're being in the moment is actually um, shaping your world. So, so you are praying constantly. Yes. Yes. And it's all within. Um, I don't know how this fits, but I wanted to say this because I thought it was so cool. I, and I quote this constantly. Reverend Johnny Reed, a blessed memory, who was a, a dear friend years ago, he in most all of his talks, he said this, he said, you are faced with two doors. One is marked heaven and the other is marked lecture on heaven. Which door do you open? <laughs> I like it. Yeah. So, you know, the lecture on heaven, the promises of awake. Here's, here's what, here's what life holds in store for you. Heaven is in a sense, abandonment of, self abandonment of the armor of the the everything um the earthly inventions the many mansions that we've sought out as as uh protection against a hostile universe mm -hmm. letting all that go and the way it works is that first you have to put down your armor mm -hmm. before you live in the land of peace we have to make the first move. It's like gratitude, you know, as we teach it in spiritual mind treatment. People say, well, I don't have anything to be grateful for. Well, you start by being grateful. And then things begin. You see, it's the action. It's always the cause. It's always within. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Welcome, Carmen Clark. Carmen oh. is saying hello to everyone. Interesting talk indeed. Awesome. Welcome, Carmen. Good to have you. you. Yeah. Um, Reverend Jesse, can you speak a little bit more to, um, you know, the, the, what, what, what are some of the things that we need to get rid of? Um, mm -hmm. to be able to, what do we need to release and let go of? Like yes. <laughs> How do, what do we need to, to um, you know, what, back, what, tell us about the baggage that we carry. <laughs> well, <laughs> in no particular order. <laughs> of, of of weight of size mm -hmm. uh, baggage I, in fact i think on sunday i was talking i confused baggage with luggage so lug, you know matching luggage luggage blue wheels on it all Louis Vuitton, yeah <laughs> yeah i mean the sense of separation is is the first thing but that i realize that's kind of vague one thing is comparison of self to other mm. um and, and with spiritual awakening we all the time you know, you and I have brought up tonight the name of Jesus the Christ, the master teacher, and so many compare themselves to him, so many compare themselves to the Buddha, so many compare themselves to the great spiritual teachers of the ages, Muhammad, Ernest Holmes, the teachers that we've known. And we say, oh, well, they had it, you know, they knew it, and you could just tell, and wow, you know, I could never be like that. And no, you couldn't, you could be like you. So we have to, we have to let go of the comparison. You can't tell if somebody else is spiritually awake and you can only tell if they're not. And by that, I mean, if their actions are deliberately harmful, you can, you can rest assured this is not somebody who's discovered the truth of their own being. But if there's somebody who is, has a completely different outlook on life than you have. It does not mean that they have not seen the same light and been to the top of the same mountain. So we let go of comparison. We let go of fussiness in the mind. Leave your mind alone. Is I think Alan Watts wrote a book by that title, Leave Your Mind Alone. We're all the time in there messing with, you know, is this good for me? Should I do this? Am I, am I thinking the right way? What do other people think of me? How am I handling my past? Take it into prayer and you'll know what to do. Take it into take it into treatment. Get a glimpse of the wholeness of who you are and you know what mm -hmm. to do. Um, and I think everything that we have is social ills, racism, sexism, homophobia, classism, elitism, all of these things fall from that. They fall, they they are subsets of people feeling like they have to compare themselves to other people, that somebody that we have to seize power and hold power and keep things close to the vest. And it, it works. It's opposite to life's flow yep. of, I have more of what I give away. I have, I have greater trust and love in life when I initiate it yes. rather than wait for it. You know, um, you know, Reverend Jesse, uh, one of the things that I think helps to heal us of that, 
I, I got again from our founding minister, Dr. Elmer. She said, stop labeling things, John. Just stop labeling things. So like in Jamaica, we, you know, we, we have a, a habit of talking about gunmen. You know, I stop calling people gunmen. You're not a gunman, you're God's child. That's who you are. Why have I put a label on you? You know, um, so I think that's a very powerful image for me. Stop putting labels. E even labels of good are still labels. Mm -hmm. So just stop saying, this is good, this is not good. This is bad, this is not bad. I must stop talking about people's chipped nail polish then. Okay. I just had a <laughs> yes. Inside joke, yeah. Inside joke. <laughs> oh, and in the laughter, let me just acknowledge, um, Bevar came back in to say, he, I, oh, I am enjoying the deep spiritual maturity that has led us to come together. Awesome, Bevar. And Denise, who is writing in from Toronto says, thanks for the reminder to start with gratitude. Yes. And Liz, Elizabeth Terry, on the point of using the teaching for tangible gain, my thinking is that if your consciousness itself has not truly been developed and expanded beyond using this power for the tangible, then it is likely that we will not keep it for long. That is the, the gain. The gain, yeah. Uh, we Absolutely. won't keep it for long. Mm. And then Sonia Williams says, eye-opening concepts. As Carol says, practice will result in spiritual development. Thank you so much for your comments, guys. Yes, how do you wow. get to Carnegie Hall? Practice, practice, practice. practice, practice. <laughs> so, so if I understand what Liz is saying, that if we use our uh, maybe lower level consciousness to gain and get, then we may, may not be likely to keep what we gain and get. I believe that, yeah. certainly. It's the same way as if you go into a friendship or a, or a romantic relationship with a low sense of self-worth mm -hmm. and you expect the other person to fix that for you. It's never gonna work. Mm -hmm. And eventually we're gonna feel found out and eventually we're gonna feel let down because they didn't meet up to the expectations that we had of them that we never shared with them, yes. <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. And the whole thing fall. And so this is, you know, all of these, all of these cycle through experiences. And then eventually one day we say, wait a minute, what is the one constant in my life? People come and go, jobs, opportunities come and go. What's the one constant in my life? I am, I my am. consciousness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's that's, that's a, a moment of awakening. I and I. I and I, yes. I and I, that's uh, the one reality. Yes, yes, we have, we have comments that are acknowledging some of what you're saying. Um, you know, leave the mind alone. Ka Carol is acknowledging that, Carol Campbell and Arlene Hilton. Hi, Arlene. Stop labeling things, she says. Yep. Oh, yeah. You know, because we're going to respond to that thing or person according to the label that we give it. Mm -hmm. that, that, is, that is law number two. You know, um, it's, it's the language that determines how things occur to us. We talk about this every, uh, oh, say Thanksgiving, where people, do you celebrate Thanksgiving in Jamaica? Okay. No, not as no, you but we, we, yeah. we, we kind of jumped on the bandwagon sometimes, and some people do, but it's not an official yeah. holiday. But you have big family gatherings. You yes. have big family, say, All annual gatherings. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, say a big, the biggest of them, maybe it's at Christmas, a big family <laughs> gathering yeah. and all the family gathers from wherever they are and everybody's a year older, you know, <laughs> and the grownups walk into that experience and they get smaller and smaller and smaller as they walk <laughs> up the steps to the family home and there's mom and dad and the grandparents and so forth and so on because they feel like they're still labeled they're still the problem child they're still the person who in fifth grade stole something from the store you know they're still looked at in this way we carry these labels with each other part of that is about dependability that we pick up you and i pick up where we left off but they become toxic when they restrict growth and I can't restrict your growth, but I can restrict my experience of your growth, which for me is effectively the same thing. And this is what's this is what's afoot in the world in terms of these judgments and these labels and, and completely uh, arbitrary and synthetic labels like political parties and even religion. 
there's one power and there's one presence and religion is just a story about it. And everybody has their own story, even if they gather together in groups. So I, yeah, I am way behind that. That is, that is awesome. An awesome observation, Reverend John. And, uh, and it starts right now. Awakening starts right now with my next choice, yeah. my next will. Wow. wow. Um, Steve is um, reinforcing the I am. And he says, I am the constant in my life. That's the I am. And play on I am, I am. Yes. See, I'm not quite sure that, that um, maybe you can say a little bit more about play on I am, I am. Uh, and, 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 I was really, and, uh, I was speaking about the play on I am. In other words, Reverend Jesse was saying, I am the one who was at the party that the fight broke out at. I was, at, I was the one, I am the one who was at so, so, so. All these different experiences, the constant is the self, uh, yeah. I am. But then that constant, that holier constant, that perfect constant is the I am. So even in looking at I am in that context, you know, we could relate ourselves and our experiences on the level that Reverend Jesse is talking about. Wonderful. You know, when you see that we are one with the one, then I becomes the one and not the particular experience. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, as, you know, as Holmes says, a belief in a life apart from God is really the dream from which we have to awaken. Yes, that is that is awesome. Yeah. That is exactly it. And and when you awaken from that, you realize it was just a dream. And you can doze now. You can have the healthy sleep. You know, we don't this is this is where leaving your mind alone comes in. Uh, I agree with constant spiritual work. And I also think that part of spiritual work is coasting from time to time yeah. on the treatments <laughs> already done on the meditations already had, right? Because what are we doing? We're working with the subconscious mind. If you cram too much stuff into the subconscious mind, like any other system, it gets backed up. Mm -hmm. And it, right? And, and some things even cancel each other out because they're coming from opposite directions. <laughs> That's why we have a release step in treatment. We don't just go right on back into recognition. So, yeah. I love <laughs> I'm really hearing um, the, the importance of, of, of just let go and let God, you know, and also that uh, um, I find that being in nature, that is a beautiful place in which to surrender at the beach or in the mountains on a hike in the, in the woods, you know, where, where there's just natural beauty all around. Oh, awesome. Oh, we have Kathy Johnson. Hi, Kathy. Good to be here considering the nature and she's asking a question. Considering the nature of the mind and knowing that the mind and the heart work in tandem, what practically can be done to have them um, synchronize to bring about transformation? Mm, good question. When you treat, when you intend, when you vision, when you create a conscious packet of energy, that you want to introduce into the subconscious or from the head into the heart mm -hmm. and the heart objects or the heart resists. What I recommend is talk to your heart, talk to your inner process mm -hmm. and find out what rather, rather than demanding that it capitulate, talk to it and ask it, what are you keeping me safe from? This gets into a whole spiritual psychology conversation that's, longer than we have time for but essentially when like for example if i'm faced with an opportunity i'm all excited about it and something in me says you're going to fail at this you're going to fail miserably you're going to fall on your face and humiliate yourself in front of the whole world what i ought to do with that is is interview that sentiment and say what are you keeping me safe from where do you originate in my past and this way you take your power back instead of shouting the thing down and, and just piling more affirmations on top of it, ask it what it wants, ask it what it needs. And it will be, it's like an alarm that you ever do this set an alarm on your phone and you forget what it's for and your phone just goes off. Well, it's an alarm that you set, you know, some years ago that whenever I'm, I'm about to really 
um, be out there on, on stage in life and with the opportunity to fail and be humiliated, I need you to remind me and pull me back from that edge. Yeah. So it's it, it, inner dialogue in brief. You know, um, you're saying, you said something that really, really resonates with me, you know, Reverend Jesse. And it's, it's the business of asking questions of that higher self and, and um, listening to the answers. Now, uh, one of the things I do is uh, I ask the questions at night before I go to bed, before I go to sleep. You know, I'm writing a workshop and it's, you know, it's, uh, I'm told that the, there's a, there are several challenges in the book. And I might feel a little daunted. What am I going to do? How is it going to work? What, what specifically must I do? And before I go to bed in the night, I ask. And every morning when I wake up, there's an answer. And it doesn't sound like a spiritually driven big voice from up there, you know, kind of thing. It just, I just, it's just a feeling. Use this process. Open that book. Try this thing. Call the client and ask this question. It just comes and I've learned to trust it over and over because it is always spot on. I just want to make a comment. Thank you for sharing that, Sandy, because I think it's so important, the spiritual practice of journaling. Mm -hmm. you know, this, the spiritual seeker is on a quest, which is where I think you get the word question from. And I, I find it so useful to write those questions in my journal and then listen within for the answers. Mm -hmm. I love what you said, Reverend Jesse, about asking your heart, what is it you want me to know yeah. about this? Um, and, you know, I grew up in the shadow of a brilliant, bigger, older brother, and I was always compared to him. And so I, I just love what you said about, about the comparisons, you know? We do it to ourselves all the time. I even see it in our own center. You know, people go online and they watch another center service and it's wonderful. And they come back and say, boy, they do such wonderful things. And what you can hear behind that is we're not quite as good. You know, and I want us to be very, very aware of that, that we are wonderful. Yes, yeah. we can learn from, you know, we come on and watch um, another center. We can learn from it, but not to compare ourselves. Because exactly. We, we are unique. There is not another center for spiritual living in the world that is a Jamaican center for spiritual living. Absolutely. Thank you, Reverend John. Awesome. You know, we, have, we have a couple of just comments quickly. Um, Arlene says, when you judge someone, it doesn't define them. It defines you. Beautiful, Arlene. Yes. And, and Carol Charlton, practitioner, says, I have enjoyed the ease and clarity of this discussion. <clears throat> And I think it was Steve who commented the quest I on, you know, question is spelled Q-U-E-S-T-I-O-N, but he has written it, the quest space I, I mm -hmm. space quest on. I on. Which, is, which is the way you would say it in Jamaica. The yes. quest I'm on, on. Yes, yes. Quest I on. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. It's absolutely amazing. Steve does that with words all the time. It's wonderful. Yes. We will have a conversation and then all of a sudden we get a song that he has penned music and lyrics right in you know based on, on, on that discussion. So Steve, you have an assignment. The quest I on definitely has to be a chant. <laughs> it's divine mind working through Steve. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, I Reverend on. Jesse, I a little birdie whispered in my ear and told me that you have a book coming out. I do, thank you. Yes, I mean, now, you know, I, I, I am one of your biggest fans. Those two Q&A sessions in the Science of Mind magazine, there's always something powerful and Absolutely. impactful in those, in those Q&As. And I, I gather that your book is going to compile all of these Q&A sessions from going back over the years one wow. tell us about that not quite all of them it, the book would be too big oh yeah. it would uh oh you're it would be a, so humble it would well it would be a doorstop so, <laughs> <laughs> i took 12 categories of question or 12 aspects of life experience 
mm. created a chapter for each one and each one has 20 questions and a response wow. and as i put in the introduction they're not answers because an answer closes a conversation right yeah. two plus two equals four that's it boom you're done these are responses because i don't have anybody's answers Nobody has anybody else's answers. What we have is information and our own journey, our own quest that we are on, you know. Our own experience. So, yeah, our own experience. And so I respond. People say, well, what do you think? Now I can tell them what I think Ernest Holmes means by a certain passage. But if they get into what should I do in this area of my life, all I can do is offer some kind of um, kind of a witnessing to where they where they are and how they might apply spiritual principle. But I don't have answers. So anyhow, all of this, I'm. I'm pleased to say is in the hands of the editors now and uh whereas i've been saying spring spring turns to summer i think it'll be early summer before the book is actually uh published mm -hmm. but sooner than later mm -hmm. and it will be available on the csl.org website and various other places and we're working on wholesalers and so on now and i will i will make sure that uh that you have that information and uh, Reverend John and Sandy are getting a copy from me for oh, sure. Oh, wonderful. Um, anyhow, I encourage you to uh, to check out the publications on CSL.org, State Park Point Press, and uh, also Spiritual Living Press. A, a lot of wonderful titles that they brought out over the years, and more in the pipeline. Yes, so. awesome. Okay, so Thank you. just about in the in the in the wrap up stages. Um, well, I know I'm excited about the book. And I'm really, really looking forward to that. And, um, you know, you, you say that it's going to be in categories, which makes reading a whole lot easier. So that sounds really, really exciting. So we will look out for that in the summer. And, and you certainly will tell us. Um, we have a, a book room at our, our center. And we'd be happy to, to, to have a few copies. For Thank you so much. In our book room as well. Awesome. Absolutely. Um, what is one question you would have of us or the Jamaica church here at the Temple of Light in, in Kingston, Jamaica? Centers for, the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living. What's a question you'd have for us? What would you like to know from us? What are you going to do for the next 40 years? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. I, I, for me, I, I want to see this teaching um, embrace and you know touch, move and inspire every person in our our Jamaican home or Jamaican family. I want to see our well, certainly for myself, um, that the, the, the light from me shines a little more brightly, that I can continue to to do the work on myself and to support others to see the light within themselves as well and to see and experience their spiritual magnificence. Reverend John. Oh, thank you. Um, we are even now in the process, Reverend Jesse, of asking ourselves that quest I on. And um, we have a, a group of six groups of innovative um, planners who are looking at six different aspects of, of the churches um, mission and vision and drafting a, a strategic plan um, for 2030. So, so ah, we are in fact in yeah. the process of doing that now. We're using a whole system approach in which people from every sec section of the community have, uh, have, have been a part of this. We had a summit last year in October, which brought together uh, people from everybody you know the little guy who works in the garden who is wonderful he does floral arrangements on a sunday um and all the various stakeholders what is your dream what is your vision how do you see the temple of light center for spiritual living um it's got to be more than the four walls and we have an absolutely exquisitely beautiful physical property in two and a half acres of verdant gardens but that's not the church <laughs> you know yeah. there's no church without you <laughs> um, C-H-U-R-C-H. So we are looking at how we can take this teaching because we are convinced that this teaching is not just for Jamaica and the Caribbean, it is for all mankind, humankind, and we are seeing humankind returning to Godkind by the light of truth emanating from centers of spiritual living all over the world. So the dream is 
that everybody will awaken mm -hmm. the spiritual magnificence in a world that already works for everyone. It really works for everyone already. They just need to wake up to it and to reframe their experience mm -hmm. of life. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Their experience of God. Beautifully said, Reverend John. Um, just to quickly, um, in the chat, uh, Theo says, in the next 40 years, I would like to see how the temple will awaken Jamaica, then the Caribbean to its spiritual magnificence. Yes. Awesome. And before that, um, Yvonne Chang Oliver. Practitioner. Our yes, practitioner and training. Our spiritual work is a constant process. We embrace the reality that God is the only power and presence in our lives. So the conversation with the presence is ongoing. Mm. Uh, Arlene says an answer closes a conversation. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow, wow, wow. Well, you know, I can't believe an hour has gone so quickly, but we still have a couple more minutes. Um, how do we support our little ones in, in their awakening? Reverend Jesse. Little ones meaning the youth? Yeah, I, I'm thinking of the little, yeah, little ones or babies yeah. as they move into tweens and then teens. And, you know, how do we support our youth in, in, in their own awakening? You tell them they're more right than they're not. <laughs> right? In other words, children get this message, I think, that they'll be enough when they're grown-ups mm -hmm. when they're citizens when they're productive citizens and that right now a lot of work has to be done to shape them into that i'm no expert on children and having said that i think that what has to be done is is to cherish the child at the level of the child to realize that the child children are closer to the heart than grown-ups are yep yep and yep. and yep and come to this information of uh, the the structure of something like treatment they come to it like ducks to water because it it confirms something that they're feeling inside themselves you you know this the the image that's often used like children playing in a sandbox are not judging each other are not looking at each other's uh uh economic status or skin color or any any defining characteristic it's it's like godlings mixing together yep and it's only later that 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 false device of information tends to come in there so i think if we approach kids at the level of kids and and uh and encourage them to to do what they naturally do which is meditate children love to meditate they don't call it that absolutely, absolutely. we call it daydreaming right Exactly. And it's meditation. Um, Reverend Jesse, our, our child month in May, uh, our lifeline, which will be on the last Thursday, our special guest is going to be one of our young adults. And her topic is bringing up your parents. Ah, beautiful. Beautiful. So be sure to, be sure to join us for that. Yes. I will. Well, and I, I, if I may, just on, uh, on that, I want to I want to say to our American viewers tonight i just tonight learned that jamaica has a child's month that is one of the most beautiful things i've ever heard uh -huh. and uh and well, let me give you another one uh, as yeah. well. On the fifth Sunday, whenever we have a fifth Sunday, the youth of the church actually conduct the service. They give the message. Yes. They do the entire service. So we'll have that in May as well. Mm -hmm. That is beautiful. Oh, that's 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 really really something to look forward to. So Reverend Jesse, um, we done, but we don't really done because you know now that we have met you, you know you are in our hearts forever. And, and you uh, and mine, and you and mine. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank yes, you. and so it was really an, an absolute um, delight to to have had you here, to have shared your insights with us, to have, you know, just reminded us of who we are. You know, we, we oftentimes we walk this path as students of truth, and then life happens, and sometimes we might forget just a tad, you know. Uh, but the work is constant, as Carol said, it's practice, 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 you know, because um, Arlene again spoke of us being godlings, I you know, that. we are, are, are reiterating the, the notion that we are godlings. And in that space, we, we need to be constantly aware 
of who we are and how we are, how we are connected with every other person on the planet. Okay, so this certainly is, we, we, we do have, a, as we say, our work cut out for us. Okay, so friends, this has been a really, really exciting time together with, with Reverend Jesse, Reverend John, we've had Steve online, we've had Vance, and we've had you, you our viewers joining us from all over. Welcome to all of, 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 of Reverend Jesse's posse from his center in Houston. It's so good to have you all as well. And of course, as soon as the whatever restrictions are li lifted, this is an absolute free plug for Brand Jamaica. To jump on a plane and come and visit us. You can come to our center and then take off and go to the North Coast or somewhere else to enjoy our sun and sea and sand or, or mountains. There's just so much here. And so we do invite you to be part of our, to continue to be part of our spiritual family. And friends, as we end this session, I'd just like to, to um, remind you that if you do feel so moved to support our ministry, we ask that you visit our donate page at donate.templeoflightcsl.org. And there you will find three ways to donate, either um, online in Jamaican or US dollars, as well as via our bank transfer or deposit arrangement. And we thank you with all our hearts for your generosity and for helping us to be a beacon of light for the world. So Reverend Jesse, it would be, no, before we go to Reverend Jesse, let me ask Reverend John to do the pleasure of, of, of thanking you. I think we just did, but had. thank you again from, from the bottom of our hearts, Reverend Jesse. It, yeah. has been, it has been inspiring, it has been refreshing, it has been thought provoking. It has moved us from hair down to hair where we, we find the presence and power enthroned in perpetual splendor. We, we just, we have now decreed you to be an honorary Jamaican. You are one away. And the I and I that you is, is part of what we is too. Thank you so much for being with us this evening. Would you close I'm, us off with one I'm of your- truly, I am truly honored. Thank you. And it has been, it has been my joy to, uh, to be with you and to speak a little and especially to make new friends. So yeah. let us, yeah. On the beauty of this springtime evening, beyond time, beyond space, beyond miles that are said to exist between Kingston and Houston, or here and there, or any place, any other place, entering into the mind of the one that is everywhere all at once, that is not exhausted by its own creation, by its own distribution throughout all that is. On this sweet spring evening, it is so easy to feel my oneness with this. It's life in me, the world in me, the universe in me, the mind of the divine in me. I feel this now, I feel this connection. And in that feeling, I speak this word about the temple of light and all who are affiliated with it in any way from those who serve every day to those who are the most casual visitor. Everyone who has ever been touched by this place, and this message, I affirm and know for each, an unfolding, enlarging consciousness of love, joy, and harmony. I affirm and know that for this center itself, prosperity, and in the sense of the word, the access to the open and willing attention of every Jamaican and every person throughout the Caribbean and across the planet as a resource of the one source. Everything necessary for this to happen, for this to continue to happen and to expand down the years now flows easily and gently through the temple of light 
and all who call it their spiritual home. As I know this, I know for each person listening, wherever you may be, right now where each one of us is, this power and this presence is fully on. The subconscious mind is our friend. The creative power within us is hospitable and open. We use it every time we think. Now we use it deliberately, consciously, lovingly, every time we think. And we remake the world in the image and likeness of the one whose emissaries, whose experiences really we are in this life. And again, whatever needs to happen for this to be facilitated now easily and wonderfully happens. And with a deep sense of gratitude for this being so, I send this idea into spiritual law, certain of its outcome in astonishing, amazing ways. Thank you, infinite presence of life for this sweet time together, for this good work done by all of us. Thank you, infinite presence of life, mother, father, God, that this is so. And so and it is. So it beautifully is. Thank you so much, Reverend Jesse. And a special thank you to our technical team, to Theo, mm -hmm. to Vance, to Steve, and to everyone watching. And we're just so grateful to have had you here with us this evening. And until we meet next month, where we will have our, our very special guest, Zoe Saunders, bringing up parents. That will be our topic. We look forward to seeing you again. Have a wonderful evening. Namaste. Namaste.